Here's a photograph of an image made by Zebra Imaging. This is a, I don't remember if it's life size or quarter scale or something, size of a giant car for Ford. And as you walk past it, you can see inside the car and different um, elements of how it works. Well, you might then ask, can you make a computer display whose images change in real time that uses holography? And the answer is yes, sort of. Um, fundamentally, you can, but folks are still working on making it practical with a large image that you can actually see. So if you hear someone claim that they have a holographic display for a computer, you really need to study those claims carefully. One example of uh, perhaps the best known of a holographic display was called Holovideo, uh, also at Steve Benton's lab at MIT. Uh, which used an interesting technique. Here they had a large computer calculate what a scene looked like from many points of view. Uh, they would modulate certain uh, diffraction patterns, which is sort of outside of the scope of this particular course. And the results would become a hologram in real time in, in a set of components called acousto-optic modulators. These are things that if you vibrate them, um, a little hologram will travel, kind of ripple down this crystal, and can diffract light. So now they've got light uh, zipping down the path of these, these uh, chambers. Uh, to make the light stand still, they would descan it with a set of horizontal scanners, and also do a raster scan with a vertical scanner. And it would create an image that you could see, um, and move your head a little bit left and right to look around. So this is an image of it. Uh, I think this is an experiment done by Wendy Plesniak, who was also in that group, in which you could create an image. You could, <laughs> because it floats in a real place in space, put a haptic interface up to it. You could pretend to carve away at this sculpture of light with a stylus. And so as you push on that image, you can feel it, because a computer knows where you're pushing. And you could change the image, and when you're all done, hit print and make a rapid prototype out of this thing, uh, out of atoms, which before were just photons. Um, the image on the right is more recent work uh, having to do with, I think it was called reconfigurable uh, image space holograms, uh, which was also done by Wendy Plesniak and, and Mike Halley and other researchers at the Media Lab. Now they're up to Mark III, and it's under the direction of uh, Professor Bove. Another um, long-standing attempt to create an electronic hologram was done by Kinetic, and I believe this project uh, is no longer, but was a very interesting idea. They tried to tackle the problem of how do you get so many pixels to create a hologram. Uh, their technique used something called active tiling, in which they compute a hologram, they load it into a customized um, uh, electrically addressable spatial light modulator, but there'd be this kind of tiled window that would illuminate parts of what was essentially a phosphor um, over time, and so they can kind of build up this giant hologram even though the uh, real light modulator was very tiny. And they described all the efforts that went into making these diffraction limited uh, optics to create this. Here's some photographs of their prototype. And this, uh, this was unclear to me if this is an image uh, taken by looking at the system or if it was an image of a synthetic hologram. But in any case, the uh, imagery looked really quite good out of this prototype. Um, another company making 3D displays is called Holographica, and um, they are one of several groups that believes that uh, your brain can interpret crisscrossing rays as point sources. So they set up many, many, many projectors, all with precise angles, and uh, can sort of steer beams of light that crisscross at various uh, ways through a viewing screen. And here's photographs of their system. It's a very large and bright and impressive system. They publish papers on the inner workings of this that you can read. Now, there are, you know, if you say, well, we need a thousand or two thousand pixels per millimeter or so, uh, and you need a lot of pixels to make a hologram, you can take existing commercial spatial light modulators and rather than project images with them, you can load hologram data into it. And if you shine laser light onto it, or really carefully calibrated LED light onto it, you could see a small reconstructed image. So these are some impressive, you know, valiant attempts, but still the imagery that's recreated is quite small, and the viewing range is quite small. This is a system called HORN, or HORN 5, which is a computer that, you know, all it does, its sort of mission in life is to calculate all of the uh, uh, 
uh, diffraction stripes needed for this hologram. In this case, they used a 1400 by 1000 pixel panel. Uh, the pixels were 10 microns apart. So if you do that math from a couple slides ago, this implies the diffraction angle is only 3 degrees. And it's going to be really hard to get both of your eyes into a space of 3 degrees and have any sort of look around. Here's a photograph of the image created by the system. So on the left is the input image that they want to see. The middle thing that looks like static is a hologram uh, that's then played onto the spatial light modulator. And then the reconstructed image is on the right. So when you shine the LED on it, magically this picture of a horn appears that you could see. So going back to our agenda, we've just been through everything from stereoscopes to holographic video. And that is it for this course. Uh, next time, we will be focusing on some really practical methods to make 3D displays that use uh, time-varying sort of light steering, where rather than having 100 projectors, you use just one uh, that's at very high speed and some intermediate optics to steer and shape light fields. So thank you for your time, and congratulations for <laughs> staying awake through class two of three. I'm Greg Favalora. Feel free to email us at greg at opticsforhire.com. And if you want to learn more, there's a number of references uh, listed here. So uh, thank you um, for enjoying this course.